anniversary of mandatory detention, that the shirt I've got on today actually indicates how long we've been fighting this campaign. It's got pictures of John Howard and Amanda Vanstone on it. Um, I think it hails from one of the times when we converged on the Baxter Detention Centre, which was a horrible detention centre just outside of Port Augusta. Um, unfortunately, since those days, while we have made some advances in that places like Baxter Detention Centre and Woomera Detention Centre are now closed, they've been replaced by places like Curtin Detention Centre, which has reopened. They've been replaced by the detention centres in Darwin. They've been replaced by places like Northam, where we were going to go today, but it is, um, well, fortunately, it's not finished yet. But it will be finished, and when it's finished, you can rest assured that we will be going up there to make our feelings felt, to make our opposition known <laughs> to the places like this, which basically abuse people who are doing nothing more than seeking what is a basic human right, a basic human right to seek asylum. Now, I don't want to depress you, but I think we have to be aware of where the campaign's at at the moment, where the public debate's at at the moment. <laughs> Yesterday in the news, we heard about the Immigration Department's scheme for homestay, where they're looking for people to put up a recently uh, a released asylum seeker, somebody who's just got their visa. They're looking for people to give them a room. Unfortunately, the rhetoric around this program is quite disgusting. Scott Morrison, the opposition spokesperson for, for immigration, said that he could not, not that anyone's asking him to, he could not guarantee these people's safety. I'd like to say to Scott Morrison, I can't guarantee your safety, mate. Uh, yeah. You turn up today. Because this is absolutely disgusting to say this kind of thing. It immediately fuels that racism that somehow asylum seekers are a threat, somehow, you know, we should be frightened of these people. It's absolutely disgraceful, and it's just not even a very subtle dog whistle to racism in this country. And unfortunately, the media go along with this, because some of the other media outlets said, oh, this is necessary because of the surge in asylum seekers, because of, you know, the flood that's coming in. This is another piece of nonsense. The asylum seekers that come into Australia every year is about the same number as refugees who cross the Kenyan border in a day. The Kenyan border in a day. Kenya doesn't actually lock up the refugees that come across its border. They don't live in palatial accommodation, nor do our asylum seekers. But Kenya is a place that probably does not have the kind of infrastructure that Australia does. It cannot cope as well as Australia does. But you do not hear this kind of rhetoric coming out of, out of Kenya. And I think this is quite telling. The other thing is the whole debate just turns a complete blind eye to the fact that if we spent half the money on public housing, half the money on shelters for people, that we spend on detention, on locking people up, on putting money into Serco's pocket, if we spent half that amount, we would not have to be asking people to put refugees up in their homes. I actually think that that program would actually be good in the context of a humane policy. It would be good. But in the context of the policy we have now, the abusive policy we have now, the inhumane policy we have now, it's an absolute travesty and it's basically a denial on the part of DIAC that they can't actually do their job. They can't actually do their job. Hear, hear. Shame. They can't look after people when they're in detention. They can't look after people when they've got their visa and they're out of detention. And this is what we're fighting. Our number one demand is that mandatory detention should go. That's our number one demand. But underpinning it all is what we want to see is a humane approach to asylum seekers. We don't want to see them victimised anymore. We don't want to see them racially vilified anymore. We want to welcome them to this country because it's their right to come here to seek safety from persecution. I'd just like to thank everyone for coming here. It's a good turnout because it's a rainy day and it's at short notice. We were going to go to Northern, but we're not going to. This is where the campaign starts. Tomorrow is uh, the trade union celebration down in Fremantle. Tomorrow we're going to be there because we need to be reaching out to the trade unions. We need to be reaching out to other social justice groups because we need to take this campaign forward. We're not mucking around here. We want to win this campaign. I don't want to be standing here in another 20 years' time. I want to be doing something else, maybe down the pub or something. But um, I'm not going to be standing here in another 20 years' time because I know we're going to win. Free the refugees! I want to uh, introduce uh, Susanna from UWA uh, RAN. Um, the campuses have um, been uh, 
uh, feverishly building the campaign uh, and they've had um, a bit of success. So uh, I want to introduce Susanna, who's an activist with UWA RAN, to come and talk about um, student perspectives and some things that they're doing. So I'll hand it over to her. Okay, um, I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of this land, past and present, and tell you a bit about what it means for me to be an activist and supporting refugee rights on campus. So this weekend marks 20 years of mandatory detention. It's 20 years of innocent people being imprisoned by our Australian government and 20 years of the Australian public choosing to live in ignorance or worse, just turning a blind eye to all the atrocities that have been happening. When people ask me and my friends and family what um, supporting refugee rights means to me and mandatory detention, I tell them that I see it as an oppression of human rights and a tool for inflicting immense emotional trauma on vulnerable, innocent people. And I tell them how angry it makes me that this is all happening right in our own backyard and not enough Australians are furious about it. I tell them I'm embarrassed to live in a country where innocent people are being detained and our colleagues, our neighbours, our friends are just turning a blind eye. So on this anniversary, the question begs, how many more years are Australians just going to stand by while this happens? We're all here today because we're really privileged to have the knowledge and know the trauma that mandatory detention inflicts and know the truth. We know beyond the propaganda of a legal boat people that um, the government feeds. We know there's not an influx of millions of refugees coming to steal our culture, Julia Gillard. And you know what? Even if there was, as a UWA student, I would welcome them. I would say it's their right to be here. You know, they're just completely following the law. And how conceited of us to not let people into land that is not even ours. They are coming here, you know, the same way we did. And I think more than letting them in, we need to open our borders and welcome them with warmth and compassion, which as Phil said, is well within our capacity as a country to do. So um, how do we move from this racist policy towards a more accepting community? I think a lot of it starts in movements such as the um, campus movements that we have at UWA. As UWA students supporting refugee rights, we try and stir up talk of an anti-mandatory detention on campus. A lot of the time we're talking to students about refugee rights who don't know much about the issue or even worse, they don't really seem to care. But so far we've seen really, um, really good turnout at RAND events at UWA. Each semester we see more people wanting to get involved. And with each speak out that we do at UWA, we um, see more students learning the horrid truth and more students wanting to join us and voice their outrage at yes. what's going on. Excellent. It's, it's really good to see that um, not only at UWA, but now there's little chapters of RAN at Curtin and Murdoch and they've been doing great things. And I'm so glad to see that RAN's important message spreading through the general population like this. Because coming together like this, in numbers as large as we can gather, is our key to success. Protest is our voice. And protest is essential to challenging the people that are endorsing mandatory detention but it's also our vehicle for, um, for communicating with those detained inside and telling them that there are Australians here that support them. There are Australians here waiting to welcome them into our community. So I'm so glad we are all here today to together voice our opinions loud and strong to say that we want to call an end for mandatory detention. 20 years has been 20 years too long. And so come together today with me, call for an end to mandatory detention, call for every human being in Australia to be treated with dignity. Doesn't matter where they came from, how they got here, all I want to ask is for every human to have freedom. It's not that much to ask for. Azadi! 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 We're not 
are here today just to defend refugee rights. Even though, obviously, that is a good part of what has brought us here today. And let's think for a minute about what the policy of mandatory detention really means. What does it mean to the people that are locked up and have been for the last 20 years inside immigration detention facilities across this country? Facilities purposely located in remote areas, largely devoid of services, where after a year, we now know not 20%, not 50%, but 89% of people detained in an immigration detention facility will develop a significant intractable mental health problem due to the experience of detention. That is what we offer. People who come to this country, vulnerable asylum seekers, coming from the world's war zones, coming from vulnerable ethnic communities like the Hazara, communities repeatedly subjected to genocide, to pogroms, and to detention without charge or trial within their own countries. That is what we have to offer them. To the mentally fragile, we offer the certainty of emotional and psychological degeneration. Because what we offer them is nothing less than psychological and emotional torture. And those of us who visit the detention centers regularly watch in horror. Well, people who are largely frightened but healthy upon their arrival, month after month, we watch the degeneration. And we know with a certainty that there will come a point when they are not coming back. So that is certainly one of the reasons we are out here. But I think just as importantly, we are out here today and we go out to the detention centers to make sure that people inside know that there is a community within this country that is appalled at their treatment. That there is a community of people who gives a damn. That there are people who are prepared to sit in the dirt outside Curtin Detention Center and be arrested to defend their rights to cross borders and seek asylum here. Their legal right to do so. And I think we are also here because decent people everywhere should be horrified that in this country and throughout Europe, we are witnessing nothing less than the rehabilitation of fascism dressed up as critiques of so-called cultural Marxism and criticisms of multicultural policies. It is nothing less than fascism being rehabilitated that we are watching. And make no mistake about it, the Howard Sattlers, the Andrew Bolts, the Marie Le Pens, they are all cut from the same cloth. Racism is something that we are also here to stand up against and to say we do not support Islamophobia, we do not support extremist right-wing rhetoric. We are here to say not just that refugees are welcome, but that Hazara are welcome, Tamils are welcome, Muslims are welcome, Hindus are welcome, that people are welcome in our communities and Mr. Morrison, we are not afraid of them. We welcome them. They have something to contribute to this country, and you don't.
because we are not just here today to defend the rights, the fundamental rights of asylum seekers. Because let's think for a moment, 20 years ago, tomorrow, what did this nation do? What does mandatory detention mean? It means that there are categories of people in this country that can be imprisoned without charge or trial. People who have committed no crime can be locked up indefinitely, not brought before a judge, not brought before a jury, not charged with any offense, but locked up. These aren't just the rights of asylum seekers that we are here today to defend. We are here today to defend a basic, fundamental principle, a principle over a thousand years old, that a government, any government, ought to have just cause to lock people up. It is our rights, it is the rights of all Australians that we are here today to defend, not just the rights of asylum seekers. We are here to say the policy of mandatory detention is a fundamental violation of human rights and the principle that governments ought to charge people with crimes and bring them for before the judicial system and that we deny the rights of governments to engage in any form of administrative detention because there are many of us here today who see the way that that power begins to creep in to other aspects of government policy. We see the creeping powers of the state, the ability to lock up not just asylum seekers, not just refugees, not just those defending their rights to cross borders and seek asylum, but activists and trade unionists. And we see our rights being continually eroded. And I'm here today to shout loud and to shout clear and to say I have a right to protest. I have a right to gather with as many people as I can get together to stand with me, to raise their voices, to stand on the streets of Perth and get signatures on petitions, to hold up signs in public that say free the refugees or no fracking or gay rights or anything I bloody well want them to say. We must dismantle this policy. We must do it for the asylum seekers, the majority of whom, 90% of whom, will be members of our society. And we need to ask what experience is the best experience for those people to have to be happy, healthy, productive citizens. And we need to stand together and demand that this policy be dismantled because it violates the fundamental principles of justice. And we will not stand for that today or any other day. And we are going to march around this center and communicate with the people inside and make sure that as is so often the case for those inside, Today will be a happy day because they will hear the voices of their fellow Australians calling for their freedom, defending their rights, and defending our rights. So we're going to march around that center and we're going to raise our voices loud and clear. Free the refugees! In things like refugee rights is when we do speak out that uh, the people inside, uh, uh, you know, gain the most from it. I remember um, a really heartbreaking story uh, from a refugee in Kern Detention Centre who uh, saw a video of a refugee protest and he actually said to one of our activists, I was so happy to see that I didn't cut myself for 12 days, you know, and this like absolutely breaks my heart. But it also, uh, you know, it it makes me want to go out there and channel my sadness into absolute anger at a system that allows this sort of thing, that allows a man, you know, this solace 
from this hell for 12 days. You know, this, uh, this should not be occurring at all. Um, and so I just want to say to everybody again uh, to attend World Refugee Day on the 16th of, um, of June. Oh, we've got a couple of people handing around leaflets, so I encourage everybody to take their take one, put it in your diary and be there uh, to stand up for refugee rights. And on that note, I think we should uh, march around this centre uh, and chant loudly uh, and, um, and forcefully that we want to free the refugees. We don't recognise the legitimacy of these fences. We don't recognise uh, the government's so-called right to imprison innocent people in these, uh, in these concentration camps. So I think we should go for a march now and chant as loud as we can, free the refugees! Free the refugees! Free the refugees! Free the refugees! Free the refugees!